Let's look at the intermolecular forces for HCN, hydrogen cyanide. So we use this chart here to figure out the intermolecular forces. First off, we want to know are any ions present. So this isn't an ionic compound, and we don't have a negative or a positive, so it's not an ion itself. So no, no ions are present, so we don't need any of this out here now. Next, we need to know if we have polar molecules. So is HCN a polar molecule? It's helpful to look at the Lewis structure for that. So we have our hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen, and they're bonded together. Let's look at this in three dimensions. So the white, that's the hydrogen, and then the gray, that's the carbon, blue is nitrogen. So it's a linear molecule. On one side, we have hydrogen. On the other, we have this nitrogen. So if we look at the surface of the molecule, the electrostatic surface, because of the difference in electronegativity, we have this positive side by the hydrogen and negative by the nitrogen here. So this is a polar molecule. If you had two hydrogen cyanide molecules together, they would be attracted. Let's go back. So we do have polar molecules present, yes. So we go down. Are the hydrogen atoms bonded to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen? And here the hydrogen, it's bonded to the carbon. So no, we end up with dipole, dipole forces. We would also have London dispersion forces, although it's likely that the dipole would be the more important or the stronger force between molecules. So in answer to our question, HCN, hydrogen cyanide, we have dipole, dipole, intermolecular forces. We would also have London dispersion forces. Note that we wouldn't have hydrogen bonding because the hydrogen, it's bonded to the carbon, not to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. This is Dr. B with the intermolecular forces for HCN. Thanks for watching.